Following the election of Patrice Lumumba as Prime Minister of the Belgian Congo on the 22nd of May 1960 and King Baudouin's independent speech on the 30th of June that same year, the Congolese people and Eisenhower administration had high hopes that the Republic of the Congo would form a stable pro-Western central government. Those hopes vanished in a matter of days as the newly elected Prime Minister will soon be dismissed. This very dismissal will set in motion a complex series of events that will set the nation in chaos. You see, Lumumba's outspoken criticism of Belgian colonial rule made him a controversial figure, particularly among Western powers. After being arrested by the Congolese army and held incommunicado, Lumumba was transferred to Katanga, where he was subjected to physical and psychological torture. On January 1961, he was secretly flown to Elizabethville, now Lubumbashi, the capital of Katanga, where he was imprisoned. Lumumba and his two aides were shot and killed by a firing squad made up of Belgian, Katangan, and other foreign soldiers. Their bodies were then buried in a shallow grave near the location of their execution. This is the story of Patrice Lumumba, an African revolutionary feared by the West. Patrice Emery Lumumba was born on July 2, 1925, in the small village of Onalua, in what was then the Belgian Congo. He was the son of a farmer and a member of the Titela ethnic group, which was known for its long tradition of resistance against colonial rule. Growing up, Lumumba was exposed to the harsh realities of colonialism and its impact on African societies. He was denied access to formal education and instead learned to read and write from a local missionary. Despite these challenges, Lumumba was a voracious reader and had a deep interest in history, politics, and philosophy. In the late 1940s, Lumumba moved to the capital city of Lapoldville, now Kinshasa, to work as a postal clerk. It was there that he became involved in the burgeoning Congolese nationalist movement, which was seeking to end Belgian colonial rule and establish an independent Congo. Lumumba quickly rose through the ranks of the nationalist movement, becoming a leader of the Mouvement National Congolaire MNC, party. He was a charismatic speaker and an effective organizer, and his calls for self-determination and social justice resonated with many Congolese. In 1956, Lumumba was arrested and imprisoned by the Belgian authorities for his nationalist activities. He spent several months in prison before being released, and his arrest only served to increase his popularity and stature among the Congolese people. Despite facing harassment and intimidation from the Belgian colonial authorities, Lumumba continued to build a strong following for his ideas of pan-Africanism and African unity. He was also a fierce critic of the brutal system of forced labor and exploitation known as the Congolization system, which had been imposed by the Belgians. In 1958, Lumumba attended the first Pan-African Conference in Accra, Ghana, where he met other prominent African nationalist leaders, including Ghana's Kwame Nkrumah and Kenya's Sekou Toure. The conference was a turning point in the struggle for African independence, and it helped to solidify Lumumba's vision of a united and liberated Africa. Overall, Lumumba's childhood and upbringing were marked by poverty, discrimination, and oppression under Belgian colonial rule. However, these experiences also shaped his political views and fueled his determination to fight for the liberation and dignity of his people. Patrice Lumumba played a pivotal role in the creation of the Mouvement National Congolaire, MNC party, which became the leading voice for Congolese independence from Belgian colonial rule. The formation of the MNC was a watershed moment in the history of the Congo and marked a turning point in the struggle for independence. Lumumba's journey to the formation of the MNC began when he moved to La Poldville, now Kinshasa, in the late 1940s. There he became involved in the Congolese nationalist movement and quickly rose through the ranks of the Abako party, which was one of the leading nationalist groups at the time. However, Lumumba soon became disillusioned with Abako's lack of concrete action and its narrow regional focus. In 1956, Lumumba, along with a group of like-minded activists, broke away from the Abako and formed the Mouvement National Congolaire MNC party. The MNC was founded on the principles of African nationalism, anti-colonialism, and socialism, 
Lumumba and his colleagues saw the MNC as a way to bring together the disparate nationalist groups across the Congo and create a united front against colonialism. If you are still watching this video at this point, it means you find it interesting. Why not take a second and hit the like button? It encourages us to make more videos like this. Under Lumumba's leadership, the MNC quickly became the leading voice for Congolese independence. The party's message of African unity and anti-colonialism resonated with people across the Congo, and its membership grew rapidly. Lumumba's powerful speeches and charismatic personality helped to mobilize the masses and inspire people to take action. However, the MNC's rise to power was not without challenges. Lumumba and his colleagues faced fierce opposition from the Belgian colonial authorities, who saw the MNC as a threat to their interests. Lumumba was arrested and imprisoned several times for his political activities, and the party was banned on several occasions. Despite these setbacks, the MNC continued to grow and gain support among the Congolese people. In conclusion, Lumumba's role in the creation of the Movement National Congo Lair, MNC Party, was crucial to the success of the Congolese independence movement. He played a key role in shaping the party's ideology and political program, and his powerful speeches and charismatic personality helped to mobilize the masses and inspire people to take action. The MNC's message of African unity and anti-colonialism resonated with people across the Congo and helped to galvanize the movement for independence. After years of colonial rule, the Congo held its first multi-party elections in May 1960. Patrice Lumumba's Mouvement National Congo Lair, MNC party, emerged as the largest party in the election, winning a plurality of seats in the National Assembly. As the leader of the largest party, Lumumba was selected by the Congolese parliament to become the country's first democratically elected prime minister. Lumumba's election as prime minister was a historic moment for the Congo and the African continent as a whole. He was seen as a symbol of hope and progress for the Congolese people, who had suffered under the yoke of Belgian colonialism for decades. Lumumba's victory was also significant in the context of the wider African independence movement, which was gaining momentum at the time. As Prime Minister, Lumumba faced many challenges, both domestically and internationally. He inherited a country that was deeply divided along ethnic, linguistic, and regional lines. He also faced opposition from the Belgian colonial authorities, who were reluctant to give up control over the country's vast natural resources. Lumumba's attempts to assert the country's independence and to assert control over its resources put him on a collision course with the colonial powers. Lumumba's vision for the Congo was one of national unity and economic development. He believed that the country's vast natural resources should be used for the benefit of the Congolese people, rather than being exploited by foreign interests. He also sought to strengthen the country's ties with other newly independent African nations in order to build a strong and united continent. Despite his best efforts, Lumumba's time as prime minister was short-lived. His attempts to assert the country's independence and to challenge the status quo put him at odds with the country's traditional power brokers, including the military and the elite. In September 1960, just three months after taking office, Lumumba was ousted in a military coup. During his brief time in office as Prime Minister of the Congo, Patrice Lumumba implemented a number of progressive policies and reforms aimed at advancing the interests of the Congolese people. Some of these policies included Nationalization of the Congo's natural resources Lumumba believed that the country's vast natural resources should be used for the benefit of the Congolese people, rather than being exploited by foreign interests. He nationalized the country's mining industry, which was previously controlled by Belgian companies and sought to use the profits to fund development projects. Land Reform Lumumba also implemented a land reform program that aimed to redistribute land to small-scale farmers and to ensure that traditional land rights were protected. This policy was designed to address the widespread poverty and inequality that existed in the country, particularly in rural areas. Education Reform Lumumba believed that education was key to the country's development, and he implemented policies aimed at expanding access to education for all Congolese citizens. 
He also sought to promote the use of indigenous languages in education, rather than imposing French as the sole language of instruction. Strengthening ties with other African nations, Lumumba was a strong advocate for Pan-Africanism, and he sought to build stronger ties with other newly independent African nations. He saw the Congo as playing a key role in the struggle for African independence and unity. In conclusion, Lumumba's election as the first democratically elected Prime Minister of the Congo was a significant moment in the country's history. It represented a moment of hope and progress for the Congolese people, who had suffered under colonial rule for decades. Lumumba's vision for a united and prosperous Congo was cut short by political maneuvering and external interference, but his legacy as a champion of African independence and unity lives on. The circumstances leading up to the silencing of Patrice Lumumba were complex and involved a range of political and economic interests, both within the Congo and internationally. Lumumba's brief tenure as prime minister had been marked by political instability, economic challenges, and tensions with foreign powers, particularly Belgium and the United States. One major factor contributing to Lumumba's downfall was the secession of the mineral-rich province of Katanga, which was led by the secessionist leader Moise Chong. The secession was supported by Belgium, which had significant economic interests in the region, and by the United States, which feared that Lumumba's ties to the Soviet Union could make the Congo a communist stronghold in Africa. Lumumba attempted to negotiate with Chom and Belgian authorities to resolve the crisis peacefully, but his efforts were largely unsuccessful. On September 1960, Lumumba was removed from office in a coup led by Colonel Joseph Mobutu, who had previously served as Lumumba's chief of staff. Mobutu was supported by Belgium and the United States, who saw him as a more reliable ally than Lumumba. Lumumba was arrested and imprisoned, and his political career appeared to be over. However, Lumumba's supporters continued to fight for his release and for the restoration of his government. Lumumba himself escaped from prison and attempted to flee to Stanleyville, where he believed he could rally support for his cause. However, he was intercepted by soldiers loyal to Mobutu and handed over to a group of Katingi separatists. Lumumba was held captive for several weeks, during which time he was subjected to torture and mistreatment. In January 1961, he was flown to Katanga, where he was handed over to Belgian mercenaries and members of the Katangas army. On January 17, he was executed by a firing squad, reportedly on the orders of Belgian and Katangas authorities. The circumstances surrounding Lumumba's death remain controversial and subject to debate, with some suggesting that foreign powers, particularly Belgium and the United States, played a direct role in his death. Belgian officials have acknowledged that they played a role in his kidnapping and detention, but have denied involvement in his actual killing. In 2002, a Belgian parliamentary commission acknowledged that Belgium bore moral responsibility for Lumumba's death. Regardless of the specific details, Lumumba's assassination was a tragic event that marked a significant setback for the cause of democracy and self-determination in Africa. Lumumba was a charismatic leader who had been democratically elected by the Congolese people, and his vision for an independent and united Congo had captured the imagination of many across the continent. His death sent shockwaves throughout Africa and the world, and it served as a stark reminder of the challenges faced by newly independent nations in the midst of Cold War tensions and geopolitical rivalries. There were strong claims that the United States and Belgium played a significant role in the downfall of Patrice Lumumba. Both countries had significant economic interests in the Congo and were concerned about Lumumba's ties to the Soviet Union, which they saw as a threat to their strategic interests in Africa. The CINA was particularly active in the Congo during this period, providing support to a range of opposition groups and working to undermine Lumumba's government. The agency saw Lumumba as a potential communist ally and worked to prevent him from consolidating power or forming strategic alliances with other communist countries. Belgium, which had previously colonized the Congo and maintained significant economic interests in the region, was also wary of Lumumba's government. Belgian officials saw Lumumba as a threat to their economic interests and were particularly concerned about his efforts to nationalize the country's mineral resources, 
which were largely controlled by Belgian companies. In the lead-up to Lumumba's downfall, both the United States and Belgium provided support to opposition groups and worked to undermine his government. They also played a role in the secession of Katanga province, which was a major factor in Lumumba's eventual removal from office. After Lumumba was removed from office in a coup led by Colonel Joseph Mobutu, both the United States and Belgium provided support to the new government. Mobutu was seen as a more reliable ally than Lumumba, and both countries provided him with financial and military support. Overall, the role of the United States and Belgium in the downfall of Patrice Lumumba was significant and had a lasting impact on the history of the Congo and the wider region. The legacy of their intervention continues to be felt today. Patrice Lumumba's impact on history and the African continent cannot be overstated. As the first democratically elected prime minister of the Congo, he played a key role in the struggle for independence from colonial rule and inspired similar movements across the continent. Lumumba was a passionate advocate for African unity and saw the struggle for independence as part of a larger global fight against colonialism and imperialism. He was a charismatic leader who captured the imagination of people across the continent and became a symbol of African liberation. Despite his short time in office, Lumumba's policies and reforms had a lasting impact on the Congo and the wider region. He implemented a series of measures aimed at promoting economic growth and development, including nationalizing key industries and implementing land reforms. Lumumba's commitment to democracy and human rights also left a lasting impression. He spoke out against corruption and authoritarianism and worked to promote social justice and equality for all Congolese citizens. However, Lumumba's legacy is also defined by his tragic death and the circumstances surrounding it. His assassination was a stark reminder of the challenges faced by newly independent nations in the midst of Cold War tensions and geopolitical rivalries. It also highlighted the ongoing struggle for democracy and human rights across the continent. Despite these challenges, Lumumba remains an inspiration to many in Africa and beyond. His commitment to the principles of democracy, social justice, and equality continues to inspire people across the continent to this day. Since his death, Patrice Lumumba has been celebrated as a hero and a symbol of national pride in the Congo. His image is displayed on murals, posters, and even on the country's banknotes. Lumumba's commitment to democracy, human rights, and social justice has made him a martyr for the cause of African liberation. Lumumba's legacy is also celebrated through various cultural events and institutions. In Kinshasa, there is a museum dedicated to his life and legacy, which includes exhibits on his political career, personal life, and the circumstances surrounding his death. In other African countries, Lumumba is often viewed as a key figure in the struggle for African independence, and his legacy is studied and celebrated in many academic and cultural contexts. The African Union has also recognized Lumumba's contributions by posthumously awarding him the title of National Hero of the Congo. Lumumba's life and legacy have also inspired many works of literature, film, and music. His speeches and writings have been translated into various languages and continue to inspire people around the world to fight for social justice and equality. Overall, Patrice Lumumba's legacy continues to be celebrated and remembered in various ways, both in the Congo and beyond. His commitment to democracy, human rights, and social justice continues to inspire people to this day and his life serves as a powerful reminder of the ongoing struggle for liberation and equality around the world. Patrice Lumumba's life and legacy serve as a powerful reminder of the challenges and opportunities that face Africa and the world today. Lumumba's unwavering commitment to democracy, human rights, and social justice is a testament to the importance of these values in our collective struggle for a more just and equitable world. By studying his life and work, we can learn important lessons about political participation, the need for social change, and the power of collective action. Moreover, by remembering Lumumba's contributions to the fight for African independence and liberation, we honor his memory and inspire future generations to continue the fight for a better world. Did you enjoy watching this video? Let us know what you think in the comment section.